right, Clint Esposito, what's going on, buddy? Not much. How are you? I'm pretty good, man. Can't complain. It's almost a new. It's a new year. New year, new me. Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is the best. This you, is one of the best fucking memes, man. You can put this on anything, you know. Like my girlfriend uh, uh, isn't mad, you know. Just whatever. When she, or when she says uh, when she gives you one word answers, you know, you could just put anything on this fucking on this meme. Yeah. Um. So how you been? What's going on with you? Uh, pretty good. Just, um, you know, same thing, trying to do some podcasts. I was actually working on a year in review uh, for 2020 when then you were like, I didn't, I forgot this was today. So that's why I was yeah. like, I thought it was the first of the year or something for some reason. Yeah, yeah don't worry about it, man. I mean, it's like, we, we, we you know, it's, we're only what, 30 minutes late? It's, it's not a big deal. It's a fucking <laughs> podcast, dude. Who gives a shit? Like I remember one time I was at this uh at this club and the host brought this comic on Lenny Lenny Marcus. He goes, Your next comic has a podcast, blah 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 blah. Bring it up uh, Lenny Marcus and Lenny goes up, he's like, dude, like he starts screaming, like, dude, I've been on fucking Letterman. I, I've been on last comic standing. You just sit at a podcast. That's like saying I have a microwave. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It, it is now everybody can uh everybody can make one everybody has one hey i was thinking with uh all the restaurants and stuff being shut down does it make you asking your girlfriend where she wants to go to eat any easier does it make it easier um she honestly, has less choices. my girlfriend's kind of like not i don't want to say lame but like i'm always the guy like let's just go out for a walk even though there's no nothing open let's get some drinks going let's 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 go into the park and just get drunk and just be idiots, you know? And she's always but like, I mean, oh, when you, can we just lay in bed all day? Like, or all When you all, ask her to life. eat, though. When For you eating, ask her what you know, she wants order to in, eat. Dude. She's pretty But simple. that's my point. There's so much less options. So it has to at least streamline the, a little bit. I see what you're saying, um, but... But it didn't I, help. She's never been like that. Like, she, there's <laughs> this one place called Charm Thai. It's Thai food. I mean... If I ever go, what are you feeling tonight? She just goes right to that. And I, I actually, maybe I'm the girl in the relationship. I'm just like, you don't want to try things. You don't want to mix it up. I think it sounds like it's so far from here. I know, man. It's pretty fucking, <laughs> pretty, uh, she's got a strap on. It's fucking, uh, it's getting there, man. But uh, I was, nice. okay, you you took that, so you look serious. You're like, oh, okay. I think I can see that. But, well, uh, there is another somebody else that brings up their pegging incident uh, we won't name any names but <laughs> oh yeah yeah like like he likes to mention it when the rough is when the set is going rough he likes to say uh this is the worst five minutes and i've been pegged <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect that's that's perfect because like he just it, it's like there's the, like that's how you get out of a, of a bomb, I guess. You just go like, oh, like this is like this isn't that bad, like, and then you just say the most embarrassing fucking thing you could possibly. Yeah. Think. Are you like? Uh, I guess this, I don't want. Are you, I I don't think you're into that shit, but like, can you do you understand it at all? What being pegged? Yeah, just like all that no. shit, dude. My like, I was banging my girlfriend the other day, and like, she was like, like trying to like rub my balls while she's and just accidentally like you could just feel the finger kind of get up there i'm just like i just shut down immediately dude my dick just went it's like i don't i don't get it i um uh hooked up with a girl with one hand and i feel like i missed my my chance for safe anal play you know what i mean because no fingers are gonna just slide up there at that point wait she was missing a hand or she had no fingers yeah no oh, it was wow. like at the that would be worse than then you're getting fisted automatically. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be easier to fight that one off, you know what I mean, than just yeah. like a finger. <laughs> how was how 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 was that, man? Like is that is that the was she hot? Like her was yeah, and she yeah. just had one hand. Yeah, that's amazing. And she was a designer of a clothing item that came in pairs. Guess. Um. A, like a, a a fashion line no but like a like a uh something that you wear that come in pairs she was a designer that comes in pairs socks no mittens no no shoes everybody usually says gloves and i'm like no you maniac she had one hand there's shoes of course so she, wait, wait, wait she invented shoes she was a shoe designer oh shoe designer 
You, I thought you said that she was, she was like, she started her own. She invented company, something. No, no, no. She was a designer of shoes. And I feel like obviously she wouldn't be a designer of gloves, you know? Yeah. Well, maybe because uh, she, uh, she's like, listen, I don't got, I don't got, I can't make the best of my hands. So I'm just going to make the best of my fucking, <laughs> what I got, you know? So how, how was, how'd you pick that girl up? That was at a dirt at a monster truck show. We were jumping at a monster truck show, and she was there with her girlfriend. Oh my god! So uh, for the for the audience, Clint, you're a fucking ex um, freestyle motocross racer. Is that true? Yes. Not now. That I gotta be uh, honest, man. That's fucking, like I I I I know you from comedy, and uh, I remember seeing just like pictures of you. Like you're just fucking like. I, so I would see pictures of a, I couldn't tell it was you, but like just the dude upside down on a bike and there's a, a dirt arena and people and torches and monster trucks. And like, I'm like, why is he posting fucking pictures of, of people upside down on bikes? And then I, I, I kind of like, you know, I got curious. I scrolled and I saw it was more and more. And then like, it, then I'm like, oh my God, that's him. And I could totally see it. Like you, you're bald, like you're, you're fucking, uh, you know, like you, you give off that like uh, extreme vibe, you know, that like alpha kind of vibe. Well, let me tell you, kids would come through the autograph line and they'd be like, who did the backflip? And I'd go, me. And then they would be very disappointed. <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like I'm, I'm like, what's the problem? Do I not have, you know, if I had tattoos? Because the other guys, there'd be three of us. Yeah. And it inadvertently, at least two or three of them would, or like three to four of us, and at least two to three of them would have full sleeves. And I have like no visible tattoos. So they're just right. like, would be very disappointed that it was me. And I even asked some little kid, probably at like seven. I, I was like, so I said, if I had, I was like, sorry, just me. Like, if I had more tattoos, would you believe it? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's so they thought you just fucking, you're just there on the line and, and some stunt guy was doing your tricks. Well, so um, not everybody does backflips at the at a lot of the shows. Right. You'll have one person that gets paid extra to do the backflips. So I was the guy normally at my shows. Right. And uh, so when they come up, they want to figure which one of you guys did the backflip. And it was me, the guy without any tattoos. See, so they were very disappointed. Well, do you get like here? So maybe this is this describes better. Well, I was trying to say earlier, it's like you look like a stunt guy. You know, you look like a Jason Statham type of dude. And Jason Statham's like, dude, I mean, he's fucking strong as shit and Jack, but it's like, he's not like, like, like that's why like in the in the movies, uh, the Fast and Furious movies, he's fighting The Rock, who's like a, 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 a titan, you know? But Jason Statham right. can, kick his, can kick his ass sometimes. Like you give off that kind of vibe where it's just like, you're, 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 <laughs> you're, you're, you're uh, what, not, not a, what is it? Ectomorph, mesomorph, uh, dicko, dickodorf. I don't know what it is, but. You just give I off know what you're talking about, but I don't know which one it is. You're the middle one. You're not the jack, the big gigantic one. You're like just kind of like the regular size. That's good. Is that insulting? I'll take it. I'll take <laughs> it. <laughs> Wait, so tell me how you got into it. Um, so when I was little, I played a bunch of sports, and then I, uh, my father had ridden motorcycles, uh, Harleys, Sportsters, and stuff. And um, there was a, not a Harley, but there was a Honda, like a smaller street bike left in the garage by one of his friends. And I was finally like, I want to ride that. So um, he taught me how to ride on that. Then I got mini bikes and stuff like that. And I started to actually race bicycles, figuring that they would be more cool with me racing bicycles right. versus dirt bikes, because that's what I wanted to race. And then uh, they never went to a bicycle race, which I only did it a couple times in one year. And then the following year, they're like, we would rather you race motor uh, dirt bikes if you're going to instead of bicycles. And I was like, okay. So then, Right. Now, why was start- that? Was it because like, like, listen, like your dad is just teaching you how to bike like that. Your, your dad's already 18 million times cooler than my dad. You know, like my dad can't catch. My dad can't throw a ball. He has no athletic ability whatsoever. Like, was your dad like kind of like this uh like so I, I always give it so my my girlfriend's uh uncle the other day i was on a, a zoom meeting with their family for christmas and she he i was drinking a white claw and he goes they make those for men now like is that the type of guy like your dad is just kind of like uh hey, listen it's it's dirt bike uh, no no pussy bikes type, type of guy um 
No, actually, they're pretty. I think now they probably regret that decision with the amount of injuries that I had. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hindsight being what it is, but especially when yeah, you're on think, health insurance, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think they just weren't that into bicycles, really. You know, right. so I think my dad was at least like he, and he never he rode street bikes, so. The first motocross race we went to, you get two races. After the first one, we were packing up to leave. If I hadn't talked to the kid next to us, that, and he come over, he's like, would your bike break? Why are you guys leaving? We're like, we're done. And they're like, no, there's a second race. We didn't know any of that. Right. Um, so, you know, he's uh, more of a mechanic type. So um, he always knew how to, his deal was always making me work on the bikes. And all my stuff always ran really well, but, you know, he didn't, he wasn't like schooling me in the technique of, of riding motocross right. really. Cause he didn't know, but. Right. Like, and like, so I guess then if your dad didn't teach you, then you basically taught yourself. So like, what do you like, dude, racing is fucking crazy, man. And like, you, like, like you said, like you got so many injuries, like you're risking your life. You're upside down. You're going through uh, hoops and shit. I, I don't know if you're doing all that, but it's like, <laughs> what, what, what is, uh, what it gives like a cop for comedy, for example, you're on stage, you get that rush from the laughter you're killing. It, it's the best feeling in the world. Like what is about, um, racing and the tricks? Like, what is that? Like, wh what makes you keep coming back? Well, if, you took comedy and amped up the adrenaline and all that, like 150 times. Right. That's about what, you know, it's like a different, <clears throat> it's a different type of adrenaline, right? Because you have full on like uh, dismemberment also possible versus, you know, yeah. people I with comedy. Stage, not, I don't think my head's going to fucking fall off. No, <laughs> you're just like, you know what I mean? People would always ask me that when I first started and they're like, aren't you afraid to get in front of those people? And I'm like, you do remember what I used to do, right? Like, yeah. Worst case scenario at comedy is like, people don't laugh at me and they hurt my feelings. You know, I'll be okay. You yeah. Know, if it, it, And it's like, it doesn't hurt your feelings if you crash your dick off in front of 3,000 people anyway. It does. That hurts just as much. And you can't walk. I, I like, hate so, that. I, yeah. I hate when people are like, uh, man, physical pain is temporary, but emotional pain is forever. I'm like, bro, if you if you stabbed me in the fucking chest, I, I would gladly be stabbed <laughs> for a year, dude. That I, I hate when people think <laughs> stupid existential shit like that. They, you know they've never been fucking hurt before in their life. Yeah, they've never been maimed before. Bro, I was watching, um, this, yeah. um, I'm watching Game of Thrones. I, I know I'm late, but like, this is there's one dude they they've literally crucified and it's just like cutting his balls off and and and, hand, and cutting his name and fingers off i'm like bro like you break up with me a million times i don't give yeah. a shit i don't want to deal with that i would rather fucking get my heart broken get teased and and my parents not talk to me ever <laughs> than fucking any of that dude that's because those other consequences aren't real for us so we don't recognize them as like we're like yeah. oh that's whatever try having somebody you know misgender you I, <laughs> <laughs> you use the wrong pronoun <laughs> would you break your arm this guy misgendered me oh dude i i think about that when i watch it that's why game of thrones is so fascinating because they're like bro like at any moment like these people are chilling with a campfire and at any moment people just 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 because you're on the wrong side of the fucking world or you're in their way they just fucking slit your throat dude and it's like Right now, we have none of those problems. If you like, you like, if you call someone the wrong gender now, that gets people upset. Like, it's like, because it, there's, there's no, like I said, it's not life or death. So yeah. people can just you're gonna get a, all they want. You're gonna get a seriously bad review on the internet. I know, right? <laughs> I, I can't. <laughs> That's ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Why'd you say that? Now you got me all fucking. No, I'm joking. Like that's like the, <laughs> that's like the. But you're new right. Though, someone will dying, be, bro. It only it someone will take it that way. That's the problem, man. Try, try getting, uh, you know, like, uh, yeah. Right now, people understood. Yeah, Except breaking it. your back is hard, but try uh, being talked down about on the internet. You must laugh when when like when people complain. 
Because, dude, you, I mean, what have you broken? Like, what, what parts have you, like, what body parts have you fucked up? My, I broke my back. I compressed my back. I did. Oh, that's um, the worst. You probably couldn't move for a year. My, well, I didn't ride for probably six months or something like that. Yeah. Um, I compressed T5, which is right up in between your shoulder blades. Uh-huh. And I had surgery on two discs in my neck. I had um, one herniated and two bulging. They decided to leave the least, um, you know, like beat up one uh, as it was. Yeah. Um, I blew my shoulder out. I separated this shoulder. That's what this is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's third degree separation. I got a, um, I used to have a screw in my wrist. Yeah. I got a plate in my top of my femur. Are you able and to go have, through metal detectors? Yeah, it does, they don't go off. They're oh, okay. stainless. <laughs> and I got I got um two a plate in my knee and a plate in my shin. Jesus Christ. Now whew, man, God bless you, dude. I've I've broken one thing once. I twisted an ankle rolling over playing little league basketball with girls. Fuck, man. Dude, uh, I gotta I got so I, I'm curious about this. Um, God, I had a, what was my, oh, so you, you do a freestyle, right? So you were doing it for a living and you're doing a freestyle. Now, when you fuck up, like when you, when you break your shoulder or whatever, who's, do you just, do, are you paying for it? Are you paying for the surgeries? Like, are, does the company take care of it? Or is there something you sign that they're like, if you get hurt here? Um, uh, mostly it's your own insurance because I was the employer. Yeah. Uh, basically we're independent contractors. Yeah. Um, even my riders are independent contractors to me and then I'm an independent contractor to the promoter. Right. Um, but when we were at the circus, the circus did have really good insurance. I got hurt at the circus one it's real bad actually. And uh, yeah, their insurance was killer. They take so, care. Um, Great. Yeah. And it was a fight to get them to like submit the stuff. So there was a couple of months in between where it was like BS, but then once I got everything submitted to them. Then they were really good. Yeah. That's but normally the rest of them, them, monster trucks and bike rallies and shit like that, you're on your own. Wow. That is, dude, that is fascinating, man. That really is so cool. <laughs> now, um, you got out of it. Why'd you get out of it? Uh, I was the last injury. I was 36 and um, the overhead on shows like so. I, I owned ramps and I rode and I booked the show, but like the booking money kind of went away. The budgets got pushed down so tight that like, if you weren't renting your ramps and riding, you basically didn't make very much money at all. Yeah. And once I got hurt, the last time I'd gotten hurt two times right in a row. So the, the one injury that happened with the circus, I blew my shoulder out. I um, bruised my kidneys. I peed brown for like a month. I broke my femur and I don't remember uh, like a full, full day is totally gone. Yeah. And then that whole week is kind of like Blurry. all run together. Um, then two years after that, I broke my tib fib, ended up getting an infection. And I'm 36 at the time. I'm already a dinosaur in riding dirt bikes. It was no longer really fulfilling to me anyway, because I didn't want to have to learn the tricks that everybody was doing. Yeah. Like, everything in a backflip basically <laughs> so i'm like i'm like this isn't really fulfilling because i'm not like trying to progress anymore to that level i don't even want to have to do that shit you know so right, right right basically i took it as the sign of like hey you know pack it in you had a good run here and like i said there there wasn't enough money to be made just um booking the shows really to have to deal with all the headaches so uh I just sold all my stuff and got out of it. I, I wish I had had a little bit better of a um, smoother departure, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. So. Yeah, dude. I, I mean, that's, that must be tough because you said you did it for 16 years, right? Yeah, that was... That's I started hang it up, the, man. I mean, that's, it's tough. From 21. I mean, that's all I really knew, honestly. Yeah. Um, I was a plumber out of school for a year. And then I quit and I started racing at like 19. So from 19 to 21, at 20, I started to do freestyle a little bit. Yeah. And then by 21, I totally com uh, quit racing. I was just doing um, freestyle shows for a living. So 
since I was 21, that's the only job I ever had until I was 36, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that was all my friends. Everything was all in that. So it was hard, hard walk away in the way that it all happened as far as getting the infection and then not being able to ride, you know, crutches for six months, yada, yada. Like it was kind of a, wow. Like I said, I think I had to be forced out. It's like, I liken it to stripping. You know, it's too easy to go and be scared for a couple of days and make two, three weeks pay and then chill. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I damn it. I can. I, I'm so interested on this, but we we got to like get to high school at some point. But it's like, also ask you like a couple. One, I really want to like. So you've broken so much shit. Like, I don't want to, this. This is gonna sound a little dumb, but it's like, does do you get used to it? Because you've broken so many fucking things. Like, like you. You know, when you twist your knee for the 18th time or you've had a way worse injury, you break your visit, like, you're like, all right, well, here we go again. Like, are you not yelling anymore? <laughs> um, you ever get used to it? In, uh, it? It kind of almost gets worse. <laughs> oh, wow. Shit. You're just like, uh, again. Like, at first, they really suck. Yeah. And then, um, and then you learn to accept it a little bit. Right. And then after a while, like the point I got to, I had like, um, like I said, those two bad ones in a row, like, like the one where I broke my femur, did my shoulder, like I couldn't walk and the, I couldn't walk two times in a row. Like well, I've had, I've had the shoulder come out. It, it is crazy how everything else gets fucked up from it. Like you can't do anything. Yeah. And I figure I did my shoulder and my femur at the same time. The one time. The next yeah. time I broke my tib fib, which is your lower leg, and then couldn't walk for like seriously six months. Um, and really, it just got to the point where it was, yeah, it was, it became worse because it was just like, I knew when I did my tib fib the last time, as soon as it happened, I knew it was going to be a drawn out process. And yeah. I basically just went like almost. I guess it would be depression, but I kind of just shut off and didn't and was just like prepared not to feel anything for the next yeah. couple of months other yeah. than be really sad. So I just was like, didn't respond to anything. It's um, like torture It's because, you know, the rehab process is going to be so long and so difficult. And then once you know, once you are, are familiar and then it happens, another injury happens and you're like, oh, shit, I got to go through all this again. Yeah. Dude, it, 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 yeah, I, I can see how you would shut off and you're just, it's fucking sad. It's all, it's like, being tortured almost like that that is probably the worst not the worst i mean i, I sound like the douchebag i was making fun of before but it's like you break the leg it's painful for whatever a couple of days or whatever you're rehabbing for and then the month of rehab and just kind of like staying at home all the time and learning how to walk again that that must be just and then you know you can't go out and you, whatever yeah yeah pain is probably the biggest um <clears throat> The biggest issue with any of that you know yeah. you get so much pain that you can't like you were saying with your shoulder everything else stops right you know so imagine like with my leg it was all swollen and infected yeah for like a month or something before i even realized what was going on so i was literally just miserable for at least a month jesus um so, wow. so one more one more thing on this topic um so you were freestyle you're booking your own gigs you were I mean, it sounds a lot like uh, comedy, you know, you're, you're basically your own boss, your own entrepreneur. I mean, it's amazing. Um, I, I'm, I'm doing comedy full time for like, I think probably four years now. And it's just all me, 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 me. Like I, I, I make my own, uh, I, I book my own gigs. I, 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 I do my own marketing and stuff. And it sounds like that's what you, that's what you were doing with um, the, the motor car racing. Um, what do you see? What similarities do you see between, uh, both fields yeah that is exactly what i was doing is what you're saying and um that's why <clears throat> once i believed i could do comedy which was the you know a mental trans transition for me to be like oh yeah you know i can do this then yeah. it was really implementing like you said the everything that i had learned from the business previous because it was all exactly the same as far yeah. as dealing with a venue so I would do the heavy lifting, provide the ramps, you know, stuff like that. Also yeah. pro provide the other talent, which is now exactly the same thing I do with comedy. So I provide the other comedians and the PA system if they need any of that stuff. Yeah. 
um, and then deal with obviously the other comedians or riders or whatever. So the business of it is actually almost you had a leg up because for me it's like I I was like oh, I just want to do comedy and then once I started doing comedy I, I I'm slowly learning about the business side as I'm going yeah. through. I mean like all this shit. I've learned in the last six years, you probably already knew going right into it, man. But it was the same way with freestyle motocross. Figure I started that at 21. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's and why now, I like, yeah, go ahead, sorry. At, at 21, I'm going to these uh, fairs and whatever and being like, yeah, I got this show. It's going to be $5,000. And yeah. I've got these 60 year old dudes like, yeah, right. You know what I mean? For yeah. a while. And then eventually I gained a, a reputation. And wow. um, people knew who I was, and I started getting referral work. They were like, yeah. "Oh, I use this guy." So then it, you know, it grew. But I definitely started the exact same way. I just happened to now going into comedy. Yes, I am fortunate because I can basically like push yeah. over all the stuff that I was doing. But I mean, it, it's a teeny bit different, but I think it's similar. Not, not, not five thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the, it's easier sell. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to sell people on having some motorcycles jump in their parking lot for five grand and then somebody might get hurt is a much more difficult sell than being like, we're going to tell some lewd jokes in your back room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we just need a <laughs> less setup too. Uh, we just need a, a stool and a stage. And yeah. you think you can provide that? And they can't. That's the funny part. A lot of these places don't even <laughs> want to provide that. <laughs> um, fuck, yeah. So. Clint, uh, Clint's working at the, um, the Dojo of Comedy East. If you guys want to go see a show, if you're in New Jersey. Also, I mean, they got uh, satellite places in LA and I believe Chicago, right? Is, there's another well, one. So uh, right now there's no other ones. There was one in Hollywood. Oh, Sycamore's done? The Sycamore Tavern closed down. Oh! It was on the, it was like on the ropes before all this happened. Sure. And, um, they kept doing like fundraisers for it. And then this just put the nail in the coffin, you know? Yeah. Well, com so. dude, I mean, I I'll say this um, about what you're doing at, at the co the Dojo Comedy East uh, at a tips in Morristown. It's fucking great, dude. You guys are getting, you guys treat comics so well. You guys bring in great acts. The audiences are fucking amazing. Throughout this pandemic, um, I would say, I would definitely... I, I would definitely like that show I did with Will and Cypher Sounds. That's probably one of the top five nights I had in pen in the pandemic. Uh, yeah, time frame, dude. I mean, great club. And just, just the most important things like Mike too. You guys just treat comics so goddamn well, Mike. That's what nice. I was gonna say. Like Mike's the hospital. <laughs> the, the hospitality is Mike for sure. Yeah, um, I'm a little bit socially awkward, so I just kind of run around and make sure everything's working correctly but uh yeah mike takes care of everybody good and the food there is amazing, amazing. that's what people go what should i get and i'm like everything's good so. yeah what just how nice mike is one time i did a show there and after i got off i was like oh let me get something to eat and the kitchen was closed it had been closed for a while and i uh, and mike was like oh, dude I'll, I'll make you something i don't know i'll make you whatever you want i'm like ah, oh, come on dude He's like i can make you a salad i'm like dude it's closed i'm like you don't have to i'm i'm not special i'm an idiot show order early. and he just ran away made a fucking a delicious salad for me and he just fucking you know just nice you know most places the kitchen's closed go fuck yourself and kill your mother you know yeah yeah <laughs> Anyway, so he happens to be a cook as well, so that's a good yeah, uh, that's combo okay. there. Also. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, fucking wow, dude, you're you're that's fascinating. The the bike shit. So you went to school in um oh fuck, I had the okay. So Roxbury. you went to school in Roxbury High School, Roxbury, New Jersey. Is that none? That has nothing to do with night at the Roxbury, right? No, it does not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being so fucking stupid now. How was that, dude? Where the fuck is Roxbury? Is that by Morris Plains? Yeah, uh, it's close. Okay. That's where I am now. I'm about 25 minutes away from Morris Plains, like a little bit further uh, west. Cool. So um, you were uh, you were you were not cool. You were a, a, a dork, um, but you're uh, you're under the radar. You were kind of in the middle. I, I think, interestingly enough, I think if you were to have, and I'm sure everybody is like this, if you were to have a conversation with somebody about how you were perceived in high school, they would probably tell you a different story than what you feel. 
bro no no more truer words have ever been said That's <laughs> fucking so true man but i i didn't even realize that that many when i talked to people after they were like everybody knew who you were which i didn't think that i don't know i didn't think that much about it i i knew that i was friends with most uh groups like i could go to whatever party i just couldn't bring my other friends Ooh, that's they a didn't good, like the other a good way to put it. They were like, you can come, but just you. Yeah. Don't bring anybody else. And then don't the other tell, group don't tell don't tell Clint uh whatever, Sean. Don't tell those fuckers. Exactly. They show up, you show up, and we're not letting you in and we're not invited. Dude, that is such a great way to put it. There, yeah. So there's people that don't get invited whatsoever. Then there's people, there's weasels, like like that kind of like they show up when everyone's super yeah, yeah. drunk and not guarding the door anymore. <laughs> And then there's us where it's just like, all right, you, you, but no, that's it. And then there's the fucking super popular or just the hot chicks who just show up with whoever they want. And, and they just, that's right. Yeah. They just walk over everyone and they, yeah. Fuck. That's a great way to put it. God damn it. That's great. <laughs> um, um, I think, yeah, so, you, know, so you, you kind of sound like me. I was kind of in that boat too. Like I would get invited to these things and they were like, you can't bring anyone. And I actually, I would try to bring my best friend with me. Cause you never want to go anywhere alone, you know? um and sometimes they'd be, they'd be okay with it but yeah i would I, I i held like i withheld party information like I, I i was so like if it came back to someone that someone that wasn't inviting you from me i was scared I would get disinvited you know yeah. but that's so true what you said dude like i was talking to um this is a while ago and i my whole high school i was so worried about trying to fit in and be popular and i was talking to someone this is you know like, like maybe a year or two ago and they were like yeah, you're one of the cool kids, man. Like you were super popular. I'm like, dude, the whole fucking time I was just terrified yeah. that I wasn't fitting in. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it weird that nobody one, I think people embellish a little bit, and maybe that's also me just not wanting to uh listen to what they are you know what I mean? Yeah, just kinda ah yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But um yeah, it's weird because I've had some people say that I was popular and this and that and the same thing. And you're like, what are you talking about? How come nobody said anything Yeah, before? Yeah, no one said anything. <laughs> <laughs> how come you didn't come up to me while we were in school and say how popular I was? <laughs> Withheld that information? Seriously, dick? Yeah, exactly. But you did so... So you were kind of in, I, I, I would assume you, you, were, you were pretty cool. Like, did, you played sports and stuff. Like, I know you weren't doing the bike stuff, but... Were you, uh, what kind of sports did you play? Um, so I played a bunch of sports up until pretty much high school. Yeah. I um, played soccer for a long time. I played soccer for like 13 years. Oh, wow. Um, and then I, I played football a couple of years. I wrestled a couple of years. Um, those are the main things I did really. And then, uh, I, I, once I started, I started doing freestyle or um, racing at 13. Yeah. So I kind of started shying away from some stuff. Yeah. But, uh, then I broke my back actually, uh, junior year in high school. Mm -hmm. Um, so then I started wrestling senior year so that I could get back in shape to race the next, uh, that next year. So I only okay. wrestled like, and I didn't even finish the season out because it started to, uh, like, my back started to bother me. Yeah. From too much twisting and stuff. So yeah. uh, I stopped. But, um, yeah, I just really did it to get back in shape. The coach was like, uh, he was like, You're using damn, I wish we had this guy the whole time, you know? Yeah. But the guy that was my weight was really good. He went to, he, like, got top, you know, five, ten in the States. So, like, I didn't have a fucking chance against right against him so they, yeah, they would well. when they wanted when they wanted to save his record for states and there was a guy that like won states the year before they would make me wrestle him so that i would get my ass whooped so that he wouldn't get a loss on his record right, right so the right. only time i would go to varsity was to get completely friggin annihilated by some kid that was like but see you know you got to take that i mean i i know he's probably the guy probably is a freak but like you got to take that opportunity and if you can beat him Bro. everyone's like what the fuck no he pointed me out like i didn't even you know if you get if they get so many points then the match is over yeah like he was so fast and knew so much that i couldn't 
I literally couldn't do, he didn't pin me, but I couldn't do anything. He just like ran around me the whole time and did all these moves. Oh, and got points. And I'm just like, damn it. Wasn't even fair. literally like first, like first uh, period, I think or something. It was ridiculous. I was like, Jesus, dude. Oh my God. Now. So you were, so you, you quit and um, you weren't as um, like you, you, so you, you started doing the race and that became your life. So, and, and you weren't as into the sports, into school, into, like, did you kind of, like, separate from, from all your friends, and, and did they not see you as often? Did you, like, have any moments where you're, like, when, maybe when you were injured and kind of laid up, you would reach out to these people, and then be like... Well, I was always around. Here? Huh? No, I was always around. Um, I would just go, like, Friday night. Yeah. I would go to the party at 8 and then leave at 10. To, to, go, to go biking? Well, you get to go home and go to sleep. You know, oh, people would be yeah. like, yes, yes. People would be like, I uh, hope this is worth it. And I'm like, oh, because there won't be a party next week. You know what I mean? Like, this is the only one. Yeah, dude, that is exactly like comedy, man. I mean, like, when 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 things were fucking um, normal, I like I wouldn't see my friends for a long fucking time, dude. And when I would see them, it was like, I was playing catch up. Like there was like, there would be new people at these parties that they were all hugging and like best friend. I'm like, who the fuck's this guy? Like, Oh, you don't know J- uh, J- uh, J- uh, Jill or whatever, or John. I'm like, I don't know this fucking guy. Like, Oh, this is like my best friend now. I'm like, what the fuck? And just You're doing like, inside things, jokes. Like, you don't know. Was that inside jokes? You don't know. Inside, yes. Inside oh. jokes. You don't know girlfriends, like all this shit. You're just playing catch up. And you feel like you're getting faded out, but it's really just like you're out of sight, out of mind. And they, people give up when you say, I'm busy this weekend for the 867th time. You know, they just go, I'm not going to hit that person up. That's true. And now you're like, I don't have any shows, but we're not allowed to see each other. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the beginning of COVID, I was hanging out with my friends all the fucking time. It was, it was the most we, we were hung out. And it's so weird. All my fucking friends got COVID. Like, recent, like, like I have friends in New York. My best friend in New York got COVID and then my best friends back home got COVID. So like, I have no one to hang out. Like I'm like having a small get together for New Year's Eve. And my girlfriend's like, where are your friends? Like you're a loser. I'm like, they're all, they're all fucking infected. Like, you know, like she's like giving me shit. She's got two friends coming and I got right now. Well, actually one of them just tested negative. So he might be able to come, but anyways. So when you, uh, wow. Fuck, man. So when you, when you, when you, so do you still see people from uh, high school now? Do you still hang out with them? No. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you said it in the saddest way? No. Not at all? No. You hate them or uh, you just, it fell out of, I mean, I know you said you were 30s, like at least 36. So I guess, is that? Well, I'm 41 now. Fuck, but, dude. Uh, you look great yeah. for 41, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. You look like you could be, it, it might be the hair, no hair or the, I don't know what it is, but you look like you, you could pass, you could be like, I'm 25. People be like, yeah, okay. It's because I've had a happy life doing things that I wanted to do, James. I haven't right. been I'll, in a cubicle. In comedy. I was just about to quit until you said That's that. That's right. I haven't been in a cubicle for the last 25 <laughs> years wanting to shoot myself doing Valium. You're right. You're right, dude. You're fucking absolutely right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> um, what are we talking about? Before? No, but do you still keep, you keep in contact with anyone? Oh, no. no. Um, a couple of people, but um, and it's only like randomly. Honestly, at uh, twenty four, um, yeah. I moved away. Yeah. And I lived down south for fourteen years, um, and I don't have kids and all that. So I mean, most people my age have kids and um aren't running around the comedy stuff all the time and you know riding dirt bikes or whatever so right i I always kind of felt like honestly you know i related more do you still hang out with your high school friends yeah dude i mean like they're all my best like they're all my best friends still i must be the weird one huh no i don't i don't i don't (laughs) i don't know dude i I, listen i'm I'm still like it's definitely like, I mean, I, I, it's definitely gotten like less, like there used to yeah. be a whole crew of us, like 10, 12 guys, you know? And, you know, we all had these girls that we would date and then sometimes they would stay in, like, we just had a big group, like our class, Yeah. but now it's like three of us, you know, 
and then you know people move and shit so it's not the same but like i still keep in contact with everyone but and you're how old i'm 27 yeah so just give it time yeah, so that's, that's like, let, let's, like <laughs> the older I get, and especially like I'm dating my this girlfriend, uh, this girl, this girl for like two years now, and like everyone's always like, it's tough, man. Like relationships aren't easy. Like they, you know, you're all these little things. And when you're in the beginning, when you're young, you're like, yeah, it's fucking stupid. That's not gonna happen to me. And then it's happening. Like it's all happening. So I, 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 I don't, uh, I don't doubt ten years from now, there's a chance I won't be talking to any of these people <laughs> anymore. <laughs> you never know what's gonna happen. Man. Yeah. I, and oh. it's like I see people sometimes. I run into them, and it's cool, and we talk. But I'm really jealous it's of you. like you do whatever you want. It's yeah. the same thing. Um, I would say, you know, people would always go, "Hey, were you were you nominated for anything in your yearbook?" And I'm like, "No." I always said that if there was a category where you could, it was like the person that you. Um, had fun hanging out with and you always said we should hang out again but then you never hung out again yeah. that would be the category i should win but nobody would remember to vote for me uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny it was always the yo we have so much fun we should hang out and then we just never hang out yeah yeah we'll tell you <laughs> yeah so yeah oh you want my phone number uh, yeah i got it i got it now. <laughs> i think i got it i got, I got your facebook bro all right um so we got a couple of um i appreciate you <laughs> uh, i appreciate you sending pictures of your signatures i it's i'm laughing because i just pulled it up and the first thing i wrote i saw was your gay lover um by mickey ferment that's the first thing that came up that sounds um, about right i just realized that um some of those girls were flirting with me when i read the messages to send them to you yeah. i was like damn I didn't even, I just realized this now. Yeah. I know exactly. <laughs> like, I remember I was reading one person's uh, yearbook and their, their signature. And it was like, one girl was literally like, you were the hottest thing. I I love you. I want to have your babies. And I, I was like, he, he was like reading it. I was reading it. And he's like, yeah, we were just friends. I was like, I don't, I, I, I think you could have went for it, man. I think, yeah. I think it could have happened. She's like, there's I want to get married of, to you. <laughs> like, I, there's a couple of numbers in there. And I'm like, I never even called anyone. <laughs> I used to call the numbers on the fucking podcast. I bet that that was not a good idea. Yeah, they can't be the same people anymore. No, they, <laughs> yeah, they just don't exist anymore. Um, all right, so let's read some of these things. I love, I love, what is this? Uh, you're a little older. I love the, the gay, um, the, the gay jokes here. Like your gay lover. Some guy called you. Yeah. Sport. Right now, if you did that, people would get triggered. For sure. <laughs> Clint, what's up, sweetheart? This year has gone by so fast, and we have only recently become lovers. I am going to miss our late night walks on the beach and the times you let me see uh, see your hug. Hog, wow. Like hog or dick? <laughs> this summer, we have to call uh, Amy and hang out. Your gay lover, Mickey Ferment. It's Mike, but it's fine. Oh, uh, uh, he said Mike. Oh, Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. For me. Do you remember this guy? You guys still gay lovers? Yeah. Like gay lovers? Um, no, joking? we just, yeah. We, yeah. We started hanging out like senior year, and we were very disappointed that we weren't better friends before that. Yeah, um, there's a lot of that, man, when you, uh, especially, like, I had that in college, too, where I just started hanging out with people in that crazy last semester where you're done and you just don't give a fuck. And you're like, yeah. why, did, why didn't we do this earlier? And it's just like, I, I, I wish I wish we had another year to just prolong this. <laughs> um, Clint, it's been a long time since I had a good. And, and then Adobe, is that ringing a bell? Adobe. Adobe. Um, I will remember parting and giant shit. And then Adobe, what is it? A N E N D O B I E S. I think it, I don't remember what it actually is, but I do remember the word. Um, Clint is a bomb diggity, James. I read, I know James. I, don't, I haven't talked to any of these people in a long time, but Clitoris. Oh, I love this person. That's a great. I, I, I guess I didn't think of that. 
Clitoris, I'm glad we got to know each other. <clears throat> We've had some fun times together. Good luck in the future. Give me a call whenever you want. I hope I'm, I'll hopefully see you this summer. This is Trisha. What a smiley face. I don't know if you could, I, I don't think she didn't give the number. So, oh, I mean, you must have had her number. I already had her number. Trisha Ooh. and I were good friends. Um, I think this one says, Clint, you will definitely have to attend the next bash at my house in July. The parents are going away. Um, not as big as last time, though. Thanks for your help with the cops. Love, Karen. <laughs> P.S. My dad says hi. Ooh, Karen and cops. You remember this story? No. I'm I don't. Even, I can't even place what Karen is. I'm sure she took care of it as fucking Karen. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably got one of those angular haircuts now. Yeah. Oh man, it's funny reading these because because with your like age, I, I assume these people have kids and shit. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, or or uh, I know Trisha does. James does. Yeah. Mike Ferment does. Damn. Probably all of them. That's everyone. There. Probably everybody in there. <laughs> oh, man. This one's going to be tough to read. Clint, I have really enjoyed talking to you this year. You're a fantastic guy, believe it or not. <laughs> but I think, <laughs> oh, believe it or not, I think of our phone conversations. Um, quad fucking remember? Is that what that says? It says quad. Yeah. It says, I remember our phone conversations, parentheses, quad, da, uh, comma, fucking. Remember? Good luck in the future. Um, go M in clothing. There's something with this M and shit. I would love a shirt. And then phone number. I don't think I called that one either. I don't remember who that is. Oh, fucker. All right. Clint. Let me see. Oh, it is quad fucking. Yeah, that's weird. Now, Why didn't I call ambiguous her? ambiguous one. It could be on your quad or your actual leg quad. Why didn't I call her, James? I don't know. She mentioned quad fucking. I think you could have <laughs> put your fucking quad up for her <laughs> quad. Um, I don't know. Why didn't you call her? Were you were you shy with the ladies? Um, I think I'm just not very. Uh, you're, you're socially, socially. right? Yeah. That's cool, man. You express it on a on bikes in midair. That's <laughs> right. Good. Uh, Clint, keep on flapping, flapjack. See you around, Bean. Oh man, I can't read that. Uh, Clint, it has been fun, especially at the tanning salon. Keep in touch. Oh, GTL guy. Uh, I worked at a tanning salon. Nice, so Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I worked at the wrong one though, because all the hot chicks went to the other one in town. Oh, it's that's like. brutal, dude. I love a. I'm I'm from Jersey. I, I love a fucking tan Jersey Shore, like just ho, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you don't love that. They got the jean shorts and the and the the belly. Shirt. They're just tan and orange, and they're just fucking like teased up. up hair, huh? Is their, is their hair teased up? Not anymore. That's when I was young. Uh, whatever it is, Poo the poof when they got the poof going. Yeah, I love that. Um, all right, Clint. It has been fun. To, oh wait, I read that one already. Clint, this summer is the best one coming. Girls, girls, girls. You know what's up. I, I'll see you at my party. Rizzo. <laughs> Clint, cute pen. Anyway, I can't believe we're finally out. I've had a great two years. We had a lot of fun together, hanging out at Corey's. I'll see you over the summer. Love, Lisa. Here's another phone. There you go. All no right. phone number on that one. Last one with the phone number. Clint, I'm really glad that we got to know each other this year. I only wish it was sooner. Oh, well, we'll have to make the best of what we got. You have a great personality. Oh, shit. Friend zone. And I hope we stay <laughs> friends for a long time. <laughs> have a great summer. Have, uh, love you. 
I think this girl's name is Faith. Faith. And she gave me her beeper number, bro. A beeper number? What the fuck? Beeper? Can you explain that to the fucking uh, millennials? <laughs> that's that's where you have to send them a message with the number for them to call back. So that's just exclusively text, right? Um, yeah, but original beepers couldn't text back. Eventually, they did make beepers that could text back. Right. Um, I oh. forget what they were called. So give me a history. Le- so I, I, I've seen it on TV. So a guy will have their flip phone, right? And then they'll have a beeper on their belt. And then the beeper would, it'll beep. And then they'll, no, I'm This wrong. is before people had flip phones. They would have no phones. What? And, well, oh. no, 98, I probably barely had a phone for a real cell yeah. phone. Yeah. Um, and it looked like a little brick. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it would still fit in your pocket. But so most people didn't have cell phones prior to that a couple years prior to that so you'd have a beeper on your belt yeah so say i needed to talk to you i would go to the number and page you with whatever number i was at so then you would call the house back and then i would be like so if it was important i'd put you know 911 afterwards or something like call back you can write a message in addition to it a little bit but it's mainly numbers Right. Okay, so it's almost like a notification. Kind of. Yeah, okay, interesting. It's just so hard for me to comprehend it because with the technology now, you're just like, well, why didn't you just add that? I'm sure back then it was, this is the, the yeah. revolutionary. Yeah. You go beep, beep, it would vibrate. Me, 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 and you, you look at it. Like, you're like, yeah, who is this? And then you look, and then they would just send you a message that when you turned over it said boobless. And you're like, this doesn't help me any. Is it boobless? Yeah, you could spell stuff out with yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. with the numbers. Uh-huh. Oh, so people I, would just I, send I, you I, stupid, I, like, stupid shit on your beeper all the time. <laughs> the beeper. <laughs> That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But <laughs> it's so fucking funny. But it's better than you just being out in the middle of wherever and not being able to get any messages that you need to call. Right. So this is like the first step to cell phones, I guess. I mean, there were probably cell phones out, but there were cell phones out, but they were so expensive that everybody couldn't afford them. Right, right, right. The beeper was like for anybody. Most every like business person had a pager so that you could page them and then they could call you back. Yeah. Dude, it's just so crazy how different things were. Man, this is not that long ago, man. It's like, no. if you wanted to go on the internet, you would have to fucking go home and, and get, get on that zero or AOL and just, you can only go, you can't, like, just the fact that all the time you can go on the internet now is like, it's fucking crazy, dude. Hey, when I started doing freestyle and driving around and racing and stuff, you had to have an almanac or an atlas, I mean. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the big books with all the yeah, yeah, states yeah. and the everything. And then you, and then you got to go to that page for the city that you're in and all that. Um, or you could print out the um, map quest directions of where you're going. When you, when you wanted to reach out to venues and stuff, you would go through the, the books too, right? And we get their number? Um, yeah, in the beginning, yeah. You'd wow. Look stuff up. But I didn't... Um, I'm trying to think if I did it that early. I probably would try and hunt numbers down through people or something to an extent, but I didn't really search through search functions, you know, came by the time I knew what I was doing to search for venues and stuff like that. There was, you know, Google or whatever it was at the time, AOL or whatever. Right, right, right. Man, what a different time, dude. Beepers. Yeah. Fuck. Um, but I just like driving across the country, like with just some maps, and you're just like, "Where do we? Where are we? It looks like yeah. we're here. We're at exit 17. You know what I mean? It is. It is fun to. It's. It's. It's a game. You know, like it's like all right, in whatever 10 miles, take this. And you gotta look. You gotta look and like be aware. Yeah. If you get there, you don't just drive and wait for your phone to go. It's yeah. Two miles. Make a left. You know what I kind of felt recently? Not recently, but a while. I've been feeling it's like. I never, I rarely fuck up direct. Like I rarely fuck up and have to turn around and then get back on track. It's like before I, I would, I would always be like, ah, oh, fuck, I got to go back. And like, but this is before um, when I was still printing stuff out, like I didn't have, a, yeah. I didn't have that for a long time, but like 
maybe like the first couple of years I was driving, I would, it was still new to the technology. So I would print out, I would have the GPS and the printout, you know? Yeah. So I remember like always fucking up and like always having to go back a step, you know? And that just doesn't happen now. Like if you have to, if you fuck up now, just following a fucking mouse, you're an idiot. Sometimes when the turns are close, but then it just reroutes you. So it's yeah, 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 man. Whew. It's like a bunch of old farts. It's gonna. Be, it's so crazy to think like there's a there's a like a generation that's not gonna know what the fuck we're talking about. Like, we used to get into towns and then go to the local like Hooters or something and just ask people where to go out. Yeah, that's you old because you couldn't couldn't google anything you're just like where's the good spots and then you find locals it's actually better because the locals are like <laughs> this is thursday thursday is this place yeah. friday is this place you know you also like, got a, a recommendation a personal recommendation if you just look up shit online it's like it's a bunch of trolls or it's whatever it, yeah like google, most googleable like whoever's paying the, the most for advertising it's not the same dude like and you know a name you're like hey uh, I'm, I'm yeah go to that bar tell mikey sent you and you go in there you get a free shot you know, I still do that all the yeah. time. I, I can't look up. I, I don't like looking up shit online and just taking recommendations. Like, I, don't, I don't trust it ever, man. Believe Fuck in bullshit. the Matrix, James. Believe in the Matrix. <laughs> oh, shit. I got to. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to make a comment <laughs> about beepers. All right. So, uh, so let me ask you this. If you could go back in high school and change anything, um, would there be anything you would change? Or would you do it? What, what would you do? You got the tie, the DeLorean, another <laughs> old reference. I would probably not go back to high school. Like, right. I didn't have that much fun. I feel yeah, like... You're fun, what, dirt biking? I'm not dirt biking. Yeah, but... Um... Yeah. I mean, I got out of school, and then I did more of what I wanted after school, you know what I mean? Versus when I was in it. I, I didn't really enjoy... I'm not, as you can gather james i'm not really a book smart person so school for me was more of a struggle yeah can you I didn't gather that <laughs> school for me was kind of a struggle so um yeah i mean and i just felt like honestly for myself i was in remedial classes for like math and english yeah and i felt like i was looked down on a lot by a lot of people and um yeah so if it was the same way that it was then, probably no, I wouldn't want to go back. If it was, and I would imagine that no matter what they try to do, kids are still ruthless and they're going to make fun of you. So, yeah, no, I would rather not go back. That? Yeah, that like, I mean, I had it too. It was like, I, I think they might have gotten rid of this at some schools with, with the way the climate is now, but it's like level, you know, you have your honors, level one, level two, and then ESL. It's like, and if you were in those classes, it, it was it was fucking embarrassing. And yeah. it's like, it, it the system only kind of gives reward and like praise to like smarter like educate like book smart people you know yeah but if you're someone like like you you were doing your own thing so you almost had your own you already had a job and it wasn't just like working at a fucking whatever footlocker or anything it was like you were working for yourself you're doing something fucking super cool and you for the next 16 and for 16 years you did it full time you didn't have your boss you it's like that is way more that's way better than um you know being in the level one class and then um doing a job you hate or like just yeah you know what i mean like that that stuff doesn't even matter you know i agree and, and my whole thing is <clears throat> like i would imagine everybody feels the same way as far as anything that i can do must be easy right like, if you can do it, then you're like, oh, that's not that hard. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody looks at everything, including people that are good at grammar or spelling or this or that, look down on other people. But it's like, maybe that's what you're good at. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, I think that we it needs to not be like there's many different types of intelligence. Yeah. And I think that that should be... Um, they push so hard for school for so long that you have to get an education and you have to, you know what I mean? Get a I, degree I or you're not going to. And then now you got to get a, you got to go to school again, get a master's, whatever. Exactly. And they, there are meanwhile, a lot of good trades and 
um, I used to tell a joke that, you know, uh, nowadays you have to be able to program a computer, you know, punctuate everything perfectly. Whereas like a hundred years ago, people would buy cars and they're like, damn, man, that thing's, you know, like crazy. Who's going to work on it? He's like, Bob down the street's a fucking genius. He'll take this thing apart, fix it, yeah. put it back together, you know, but that's not appreciated anymore. Yeah. They, they look at people like that, like, like almost like slaves in a way. It's just like, this is what you do. Like you just get on your knees and you fix shit. Like you, you're yeah. an animal. Like I, I, I'm intelligent. Like my mom, used was like that. My mom, I remember one time when I wanted to play sports, She's like, you know, sports people have all, all muscle, no brain. I mean, she was super Asian, you know, but it's like, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. Like there are professional athletes. You think a professional athlete that went to, that graduated from Yale and did whatever baseball at Yale is not smarter than me. Some douche that went to Rutgers, you know, like (laughs) make any, that doesn't make any fucking sense, you know? And there is that kind of like, you know, anytime you, like you just, yeah, like you said, like anytime someone goes down there to get their car, like some guys, you know, got that jumper on and they're like, you know, washing a, with a rag, washing some, yeah. some mechanic part. And they just think they're an idiot, you know, but they're not like, yeah. they're smarter than you. Like you need those people, like even plumbers, like you were saying, like you call them cause you need them. And then you go, Oh, you just like a plumber. He's a plumber. He deals with shit. He's like, I know something you don't. Yeah, exactly. That's the point. And that's all that my gripe is with the way that stuff is now is that <laughs> I, I'm just a different type of intelligent than they are. I can take stuff apart and look at it and figure it out. I obviously figured out how to, uh, you know, like orchestrate the freestyle deal as a business and yeah. make money off of it, you know? So it's like, um, I think education is good but i think there are some people that are just so that they're almost so educated or so smart that they're that they're like stuck in that avenue yeah you know what i mean at only be being good at that thing yeah and there are a lot of people in any in every facet like that but i mean we're just told that that's the what you have to do and i just don't i think a lot of people that's not the way you know a lot of people we're meant to probably be uh, warriors or hunters or, you know, something like that. Now they're trying to jam them behind a cubicle, like people yeah. like me. And I'm like, yeah. ah, this is making me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're absolutely, yeah, I think you're absolutely right, man. I mean, I think about, you know, especially with the pandemic now and like money and shit, you're like, should I just fucking get a jet? Like, should I, should I like, not should I, but like, can I, can I even do that? Like, can I, I just can't see like, I literally can't see myself like sitting and just doing something like for someone else and just, just being another cog, you know, I, I can't, yeah. I can't even fathom. It's, it's probably, that is torture. You know, go back to yeah. torture. Like that to me, that, that, that mental torture, that sadness of uh, that unfulfillment. I mean, I could never do it, man. And it's just tough. Cause like you had that pressure from society and, you know, your family, your your fucking whoever you're dating, everyone's kind of like, you're not making, you're not doing that. Like everyone else, you're not having kids, like you're 35, like just like, fuck, you know. And it's, you know, we're ignoring it, but at a certain, it, there's always a moment when we're, you know, looking in the mirror, if we're just like, man, fuck, you know. Everyone's doing it. Why am I doing it? Am I the weird one? Or is everyone else yeah. just normal, too normal? Anyways, all right, this got really bad. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no i agree with you yeah um yeah it's just uh i think that's the issue people will we can end on this or whatever but i think that's the issue is people um the the system's been set up now for uh capitalists in which i'm for capitalism but yeah. now the system is set up where their most businesses are just trying to milk as much productivity out of their workers yeah and these people have these houses and cars and this and that that they need to pay for yeah that they've basically strapped them into some job that they can do that they don't really like but they can do it for money and then so goes the the circle the inevitable you know unending circle of you just doing something that you hate to keep your lifestyle up or whatever 
Yeah, you're you're basically when you when you get into a position like that where you're not moving up or you're not trying to be ambitious, you're basically working to fucking uh, pay for some some cocksuckers uh, Ferrari, you know, or some yeah. fucking, you know some some guy's whore that he's cheating on her his wife with, like. But in in a, in the same time, like there's always going to be creatives out there. There's always going to be people like us out there, and maybe it's just like that system, like it's just us. Uh, the creative people are naturally going to rebel against that system in their own way. And there's something, maybe just like, just, you know, that's just how it is. Maybe if you try you know, to- The issue yeah. that I think uh, I've seen with most creatives, and you're not like this, obviously, because you're doing this and you do book all your own stuff, but most creatives only want to be creative. And yeah. in the same way, it's a different type of intelligence. They usually don't grasp the business side of stuff. And a lot of it's they don't want to, they don't want to have to do it. But a lot of people don't even grasp the business side of it. Um, so, I mean, I think that's kind of, again, it's just a different type of intelligence. And I would say the people like I, I, I'm middle of the road. I'm kind of, I'm pretty creative, but I'm also a hard worker. Like, and I get the work ethic and stuff like that. Yeah. But I feel like probably the people that are uber talented artistic wise, probably don't want to fuck with any of this stuff <laughs> you know what i mean yeah yeah and um you know i mean listen i'm doing this stuff out of necessity because i have to but i exactly I think there's gonna be a certain you point get where it. if i get successful enough I, i'm not doing any of this shit anymore man you know 100 percent. i would I, I agree with you too but there are a lot of people that they just don't, don't even, even have they don't even start there exactly yeah. they don't even have the wherewithal to be like i'm gonna have to push this through until i get to a certain point you know they're just like waiting for somebody to show that, up and be like you're such a talent they're like yeah. let me sign you that's the biggest fallacy like people i think i i, I don't I, I i remember when i was starting people were like you like you know you gotta you gotta wait for them to this whole wait for them to come to you or you're gonna get discovered is such bullshit it's like yeah you just got to be in the right place at the right time, but you got to always bring it and you always got to be working and you got to give your, you got to give yourselves the opportunities. It's not going to fucking happen for you. You have to be prepared. And I've had this conversation with a lot of people and there's like a second podcast we could have yeah. here, but um, what were we just saying? I just got distracted. You got to be, um, what do you call it? Prepared whenever. Oh, oh, oh. They, yeah, you yeah. can't so, let so, things come to you. People are always waiting for these opportunities, right? Yeah. And um, uh, the problem is that you have to really enjoy what you're doing. Like, so, and I do this with everything because of most of my life was spent riding dirt bikes. And I rode dirt bikes for a long time before there was ever even a thought or a glimmer of being able to make money at it. And yeah. I did it because I really enjoyed it. So uh, if I hadn't raced and hadn't had a pro license, when the freestyle motocross stuff um, where we could jump and do tricks came along, I wouldn't have had the confidence to do that. So like, I basically, like I'm saying, I did it because I loved it. And then it made it so that I was in the position that when the opportunity came about, I was able to take advantage of it. Yeah. And, and people are waiting to get the opportunity first, and then they're going to prepare. And it's not that way. You have to do it with no promise of money or anything and get good at that because you want to be good at it. Yeah. And then when the opportunity comes along, you'll be in the position to take advantage of it. Yeah. But it's like if you didn't do any of the work and the opportunity comes along, then you can't take advantage of it anyway. Or if you get it, you're going to lose it because you weren't ready. So in any event, it goes back to you doing this because you want to do it, not because you think you're going to get money or you're going to get girls or whatever. Right. Well, yeah, and that, but that, that's that's one of these. That's a kind of an uncontrolled variable, like if how much someone wants to do something. You know, that's just kind of you either you, you really want to do it and you love it, you need it, you can't live without it, or you're just going to be one of those you know people that are just lying to themselves. I think. Yeah, no, you're 100% right. Lots of people like to say, I'm going to do this, and they think that, but at the same time, they're either um, self-sabotaging or just not doing the things that they need to do to get to the next step. Yeah, yeah. 
And that's because they don't really love it. That's that's what that's what I think. I don't think they really love it. I think they they think it's cool or whatever the fuck. And um, they are you know maybe they do, but their attention's elsewhere. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. And I've always said the people, you know, it's it's they're <clears throat> on this. It's the exact same thing as riding and and comedy, as in the fact that the people that really wanted to ride or really want to do comedy you can't stop and yeah. the other people that keep going i'm going to do this i'm going to do that those people will never do it because they're still trying they're they're in the you know diet starts monday type of deal yeah i'm waiting yeah, for yeah. the new year new year new, new may Woo! yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> you're waiting for some arbitrary date that doesn't mean shit the yeah. people that really want shit you can't stop them they started yesterday you know what I mean? They start art meet or whenever they have that thought, I got to do it. They just fucking start right now, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. how you got to be. And I love that you do that, James. And thank oh, you thank for having you, me man. on your podcast. Thank you. Yeah, dude. It's calm. I need it. I like the pandemic. I, I Pandemic. There was never a point where I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Like, it was like, I don't know. I'm going to do it. Like, there's no yeah. whatever way to to get, get on. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Never cross my mind. I'm with but, you. Yeah. I'm All right, so where can people attitude. find you? And um, what do you want to let people know you're um, doing? This will come out uh, in a week. <clears throat> um, well, I'm pretty much around uh, the dojo of comedy uh, east here all the time. The website for that is actually still uh, tiffscomedy.com. Okay. Um, other than that, you can find me at uh, clintesposito.com. Um, I have you know, a lot of podcasts and stuff that I do listed up there. Yep. Um, or uh, freethinker.tv. That's another place. There's a lot of podcasts. But if you just go to my website, um, I'll have a, you know, it'll direct you to all the podcasts and shows and tickets and all that stuff, which obviously there's not too much of that going on at the moment. But, you know. Time. <clears throat> um, yeah, hope everybody uh, has a good new year. Hopefully 2021 um, is not just an extenuation of 2020. And uh, some of this stuff starts to get ironed out. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I, I, I can't hope for that anymore. I, uh, it's really. The, I was thinking about how depressing it was like yesterday, and uh, just the whole year not lost, but man, if things were normal, <laughs> it, uh, just the 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 what if is drives. It was really keeping me up at last night. Like, where would I be if I had actually? nine months of getting on stage consistently you know where would i yeah. be I'm sure i was you... actually very lucky being around the dojo that i got a lot of time and i've actually gotten much better as a comedian i feel like in the last um six eight months which i would probably say most people cannot say that yeah you're blessed you're blessed seriously you are very blessed no i'm very i feel very fortunate Again, I, I work to get myself into the position, but um, I'm not an idiot and I don't, uh, I'm not looking at, you know, gift, gift horse in the mouth. Like I get it. And um, I, uh, like you said, same thing. I just wanted to try and keep it going as best I could this year and, uh, you know, make whatever progress I could with uh, the circumstances given. So I definitely am very fortunate to be, uh, able to say that i got better in 2020 slizzer all right guys thank you so much for uh tuning in we'll i'll see you next week bye <laughs>